the Jenko bean, also known by the more descriptive names of ape's earring or stink bean. Jenko is a tree species of the pea family. These legume trees are native to Southeast Asia and can be found in Thailand, Malaysia, Myanmar and Indonesia. They can grow up to 25 meters tall and start to flower between September and January. Young leaves are burgundy red and later change color to a lush green, growing up to 25 centimeters long. The fruits are purple brownish color and grow in clusters. Each pot contains between 3 to 9 seeds. Despite being mildly toxic, the beans are widely consumed where they grow, being fried, boiled, roasted, or even eaten raw. From a nutritional point of view, Jankol beans are valuable. Compared to other common legumes, Jankol has a comparatively low carbohydrate content of about 26%, as well as a protein content of roughly 14.2%. One characteristic of Jenkel beans that might alert you when you find yourself eating one is the smell of it. Jenkel has a rather fragrant scent of sulfur, which is sure to give you a bad breath in an instant. And reminiscent of the experience of eating asparagus, the smell carries over to the bathroom upon relieving yourself. Beside consumption as food, Jenkel beans are used in traditional Southeast Asian medicine. Young leaves are used to treat skin problems. Old leaves are burned to relieve itchy feelings. Powder from burnt young leaves is applied to treat cuts and wounds. But its use doesn't stop there. Jankol can also be used as a natural dye. The pots of the seeds can dye silk purple and the bark of the tree dyes black. Due to the content of jankolic acid in the seeds, the raw seeds are also being used for the production of organic pesticides to kill and prevent the growth of weeds and other pests. The jankolic acid present in the jankol seeds can cause a condition called jankolism, a poisoning after ingestion. The clinical features defining jankolism include nausea, flank pain, urinary obstruction, blood in the urine and acute kidney injury. Although the majority of people with jankolism recover with appropriate treatment, in severe cases it can make surgery necessary or even lead to kidney failure and death. The development of jankalism appears to be independent from cooking method, amount of beans ingested, and even from past experiences. Meaning you could eat a bowl of roasted jankal beans one day and be fine, but eat a single cooked bean another time and get affected. Would you be brave enough to try it? Let me know in the comments.